Today, we're going to take a look at these six different airbrushes, and these are all airbrushes that can be bought for under 100 US dollars with the Sparmax Max 35, which is also the exact same airbrush as the Sparmax SP35, with the addition, with the difference being. The SP35 has a cutout handle instead of having a needle limiter in here. It has just a cutout on the handle and I have confirmed that with Sparmax. They carry the same nozzles and the same needles. The 270 and the 289 GSI Creos are virtually identical airbrushes. So I won't be doing any spraying with the 270 uh, mainly because I flipped this off of my table and I'm waiting on a new needle and nozzle for that. So we won't be doing any spraying with that today. So for all intents and purposes, everything that stands to the 289 will be the same with the 270. These have been re regularly priced in the $80 price range for months now. And that's a pretty fantastic bargain. The Badger 105 Patriot and the Badger Omni 4000 are both can be found in the 90 or low $90 range in the United States. And currently that's the only Badger airbrushes on the market that are under the $100 price point regularly on, you know, without a special sale or anything like that. Um, it, with the exception, you can get the Patriot Arrow, which is the same as the regular Patriot, just with a different cup on it. And then we have the GSI Creos PS290, which has regularly been in the mid $90 range in the United States. And it stayed there for some time. It, of course, being a fan pattern, round pattern combination airbrush and operates with a trigger instead of a lever really quickly going to go over the creos we're not going to do any sprays with it today i have a full review elsewhere on the on my youtube channel that you guys can look at if you're interested in it but i wanted to talk quickly about what makes these flow so much more paint than regular airbrushes if you look at the end of the needle and how blunt that is so when you are working with these airbrushes when you pull back the trigger as soon as it starts to pull back it completely gets out of the tip of the nozzle. So in other words, when this stops, it stops literally just at the end of the nozzle. It does not protrude through. So when you pull back, it immediately opens, complete opening of that nozzle almost instantaneously with a little bit of taper here. And the further, of course, you pull it back, the more paint you get, but it's instantly opening up a much larger opening than a airbrush that the nozzle that the needle protrudes through the nozzle and last thing i will say about this this airbrush is identical to the iwata th with the exception of the iwata th has a mac valve and these are great for base coating primers and things like that. This is probably, if you do not already have a TH or do not have spray guns, this should probably be on your short list to pick up if you are a scale modeler. Not necessarily so much so an artist. I feel the fan pattern does not open up wide enough for large coverage, but if you're doing things like skate decks, blending candies and stuff like that, these are very, very handy. That brings us to these four to talk about. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to spray out the widest pattern that these airbrushes produce, of course, being the Badger Patriot up at the top. And then we are going to move on and spray the largest pattern that the Omni will spray. And then we will do the largest pattern that the 289 will spray. And then the largest pattern that the Barmax Max 35 will spray. And there's about an eighth of an inch increment jump from each of these airbrushes almost exactly. So being that the Sparmax Max 35 comes in at about five eighths and then the 289 about three quarters and then the Omni does about seven eighths and then the 
Badger Patriot pulls out a little bit over an inch wide. Now let's talk about the difference between the Omni and the Patriot that I have here. It's also important to note that you can get different needle tips and size nozzles for the Badger 105. You can get to the super detail nozzle, which is the same nozzle and needle assembly that is in the Patriot Extreme, or you can go one larger than this one, and the normal one is one shorter. So this is the medium, not the large, but the medium and that is a pretty big tip so i may order um, a new super detail setup for this i have one set up for a super detail but i gave that to my son so i don't have that here if you guys are interested in it leave me a comment we can compare you know maybe do a review on that because i've actually never done a full-on review of the 105 for some reason so let's talk about similarities though both of these are nickel finished so if you got a nickel allergy out of the question. The, you're not going to want to, you know, have these. I don't mind the nickel finish so much. It does tend to tarnish. It does tend to get, you know, looking bad and, you know, modeling and stuff like that. It just the way it is. And, uh, you know, that's going to be the way it is. And nothing we can really do about that. Both triggers have the glide coat coating on it. The normal Badger set up for the rocker assembly is in two pieces on the Patriot, but you have the one made it up for the Omni. And of course, these are pretty filthy as you can tell right now. We need to do a deep clean on these. So, but they're both self-centering needles and nozzles. The taper on the Omni is a very fast taper, but I have found that I actually can get in finer with the Omni than I can with the Patriot under this setup. And I think the real, a lot of that has to do with the fact that since you've got the, you know, nozzle cap like this, that it, as you get up really close to the work surface, I think when you're dealing with this head and not the super detail head i think some of that airflow gets disturbed as you get really close to the work surface and i think that's one of the reasons why it can really start to struggle trying to get really tight detail with the you know with the you know medium setup tip but you know the detail is going to be relative because the detail of these are not going to even come close to the other two airbrushes over here I'll go ahead and spray out which, you know, align with each of these airbrushes. I did made no attempt to reduce or get the perfect mixture or anything like that with this paint. So this is just kind of what, what it is without adjusting my pressure. The pressure was at 25 PSI, which is what I sprayed out the large patterns with. And I made no attempt to adjust pressure. I made no attempt to reduce or change the paint viscosity. So I just, this was E-Tech EFX red, right out of the, or magenta, right out of the bottle for all four of these, you know, airbrushes. As a comparison, I wanted to point out distance from needle to tip. If you compare the Creos to the, you know, Omni and the Patriot, of course it looks monstrously longer. It's not really that bad, but it is significantly longer, and some people do not like that. So this is actually a shorter distance from the tip to the center line of the trigger than the Iwata Eclipse. So let's go into pros and cons before I do finer line spraying. Let's go into some pros and cons. And since the pros and cons are pretty much going to be the same with the Omni and the Patriot, the Cons, as I mentioned, these are nickel finished, so if you've got a nickel allergy, that is going to be a problem for you, most likely, unless you're planning on wearing gloves. So not having chrome finished, it would be a negative. And the other negative we're going to go with, the other con we're going to go with is the overall fit and finish and quality graininess of parts that don't really matter is not as high as the other airbrushes here. And 
that is, you know, something that you, when you run into stuff, fit and finish issues on a $30 cheap airbrush like the last review you talked about, you know, it's very easy to overlook when you start running into fit and finish problems with a $100 airbrush. That's an entirely different story. However, they work and perform very well. The needle and nozzle combinations in these airbrushes make them fantastic for wider coverage spraying. The Omni is my preferred because I do more art. But if I was doing more models, and I still use my Patriot for that, it's great. There's, there's a reason. This is probably the most popular airbrush for scale modelers out there. And there's a good reason for that. Not just because of brand loyalty, not just because it's made in the USA, but because you can spray everything with it. You can spray metallics, you can spray your primers, you can do that. With the Patriot in particular, you can change that over and put a super detail setup on it and then come in with smaller stuff. I personally would rather have an airbrush set up for each size I might use it. I don't like swapping needle and nozzles a lot, but it really won't hurt anything with these because it's simply with that nozzle, it's not like a big deal to change that. So you're not, you know, you're not taking apart, unscrewing a nozzle where things are going to get damaged from taking them apart too much. As I mentioned how about the spraying characteristics, being able to handle all those different things, they also atomize it very, very well. You'll see me very often use my Omni or my Patriot if I'm doing a small scale with like the UVLS clear coats because it sprays very well at a low pressure and can spray that very heavy viscosity clear coat finish and not have an issue with it. So these will spray at very low pressure. They'll also allow you to spray at higher pressures to really get in there with thick paint if you want to. Being able to do thick and thins t-shirt style art is, you know, one of the things they do really well. And the Patriot is the same airbrush as the Anthem, only the Anthem is in the bottle feed version. Okay, now I've pulled apart my Creos and my Sparmax and as I'm still on one of the other benefits of the Omni and the Patriot. This is the Patriot needle. If you look at the needle and that taper on the needle and then look how robust that is, durable. The Patriot and the Omni are absolutely very, very durable. They put up with a lot. Um, one of the reasons I like the Omni better than the Patriot is the Patriot has a Instead of having a needle packing in here that you can screw in, it actually has a sleeve. And if that sleeve were to get damaged in any way, it has to be sent back to the factory to be fixed. But, and this one has, you know, a needle packing very similar to the Awada clips and most other airbrushes. So, you know, I prefer that I can repair that myself, but it's really not that big a deal. Let's talk pros and cons of the GSI Creos PS289, and I'll put it back together while I'm uh, talking about that. One, you know, we've talked about this before, that head comes out like that, so you can get in here without having to unscrew the nozzle itself, risking damage, and get in here and clean that out. Although it's not that big a deal if you're experienced. As a matter of fact, if you're experienced, you shouldn't be taking nozzles out a whole lot. There's really not a whole lot of reason to, as long as you're taking care of your brush pretty well. Um, so, you know, when you're beginning, you're going to probably take your airbrush part a lot. So these may not be the best beginner airbrushes or the SP20 probably wouldn't be. But since you can take that whole head assembly off, you know, not an issue whatsoever. Uh, it's one of the reasons I recommend these highly. But these are absolute world-class airbrushes one of my is they are, they are some of my favorite airbrushes what is the downside it's really really long the distance from the trigger to the tip is very far um and parts are expensive they're just as expensive as iwata parts even though the airbrush doesn't cost near as much as iwata the price parts for parts is just as much and that's you know kind of not that big a deal to me because you know you shouldn't be needing a whole lot of parts a whole lot if you're taking care of your brushes but it may mean something to somebody um 
other than that, I really don't have complaints about this brush. The MAC valve works fabulously. The I have to struggle to find anything that's wrong with this brush. They're really, really good and they punch well beyond their, their price point. So, you know, it, it makes me struggle to find something wrong with this. I can tell you it's long, it's heavy, it's a big airbrush. The trigger is very solid, durable, you know. Um, talked about this before. It's very flat, very wide, wider than a water air trigger. So the trigger on this is actually just a little bit nicer than what's on my Eclipse. The overall trigger feel, though, is not the best I've seen, but it's really good. They're very responsive brushes. Um, downside being, I wouldn't want to start spraying metallics or anything like that. It is not what you want to use this airbrush for. The passages just aren't that open. The Eclipse would be a much better choice than that, but by far the Patriot is much better for things like that. There are there are much better choices than that if you want to do, you know, a lot of like pearls, metallics, and things like that in models. This wouldn't be my first choice, but they are good brushes for modelers just understanding it's not going to be your priming base coating or spray you know heavy pearls if you're doing that and most likely if you're doing gundams you're not doing a lot of pearls but if you're doing you know rc scale modeling then you're probably spraying a lot of pearl paints in which case you know that that that's what this brush is made for absolutely and these do a really really good dot job to it too as well although i do more art so i prefer the omni just a little bit over the patriot now i'm going to take straight createx transparent paint which is a thick paint and i'm going to spray it through the 289 and the sparmax max 35 and just to show that it, it's not that these can't handle some thicker paints and the Max 35 does really well with it. You'll see I was working like sideways this first spray attempt with the Max 35. So I'm going to readjust my camera so I can actually stand in front of my work because I was working off to the right um, with my arms extended. And try that again. And you can see the Max 35 puts out a really crisp and beautiful line, even dealing with, you know, paints as thick as Createx. So now I've got the Max 35 here disassembled in here is where I'm going to show you the difference. This may not, this trigger assembly may not be something you've seen a whole lot of. This is the same trigger style that is used in the Iwata Micron. It's also used in the high performance brushes. So here's what I'm going to say, and, and some people aren't going to believe me. Being that Sparmax is a Taiwan company, so it's Taiwanese, not Japanese. This airbrush, if I were to not be able to look on the outside of it at all and just spray it, I would probably think that I was spraying with an Iwata HPC Plus, which is the High Performance Plus, not the one with the Mac valve because they share the exact same trigger assembly and that has a piston that goes in there and comes down and then you've got the removable you know valve assembly this brush's trigger is extraordinarily good it's better than the trigger on the creos brushes it, it, it rivals anything i have put my hands on you know, it is as good as my Micron. You do not have the adjustment for tension on the backside here like you do with a Micron. But that's not an issue for me at all. Actually, I like these to be a little bit stiffer. You know, I like them cranked all the way in, as stiff as they can get for the back. But even then, it is just smooth. It, it is perfectly smooth. Now, one thing that will annoy me is if the trigger is hard to press down on. And this one was a little bit stiffer than I liked. So what I actually did is just changed the entire assembly out with one from a Chinese airbrush that was a little bit softer. And, you know, 
the, it screwed right on there. Forgot how much I like this airbrush. Um, the quality of this airbrush for, you can buy the SP35 for about $70 on Amazon right now. And you can find the Max 35 right around 80-ish dollars, just depends. Um, the SP35 and the Max 35 are the same. The only difference is this back handle. You have the limiter on the Max 35. You do not have that on the SP35. Instead, you have a cutout handle. Not a big deal whatsoever to me because I have so many handles I can take off and change out for whichever ones I prefer. And these work fine clothes just like this to me anyway. Now, I have to find some cons, right? So I have to find something I don't like about this brush. That cup is going to annoy a lot of people. It's very small. However, if you're using this as a detail airbrush, really, it's got plenty of room, but it's going to annoy some people. The cup kind of annoyed me, but I forgot how great this brush really, really was until I pulled it out, you know, to look at it the other day. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang this up as my detail airbrush for a while on my you know right there at my easel and i'm going to put my 270 and 289 away for a little bit i'm going to use this for the next couple weeks and see i might wind up sticking with this and it's an absolutely lovely lovely brush it's it it has no business being as good as it is it i'm telling you when i say i could not tell the difference between this and an HPC Plus as far as performance, and that's a $200 airbrush. These are absolutely stellar. Um, of course, the C Plus has a different cup. Now, it's also important to note the Max 3, the Max 4, those airbrushes do not share the same needle and nozzle setup as the Max 35. There are different airbrushes. They're not the same. So if you have a Max 3, I do not have a Max 3. So I guess maybe I should pick one up, but I do know that they have different parts. So the parts are not interchangeable. And so, you, you know, if you have one of those and you don't necessarily like it, let me know, but I may pick one up and, you know, so I can take a look at them because this brush is absolutely stellar. I had both this and the SP35 and they are incredible airbrushes. I really can't find anything negative to say about it except for that cup. The fit and finish quality is amazing. It, it, it is Iwata level quality in every way, shape, or form. I suspect you would never see one of these with a normal C cup on it because that would cut into Iwata's high performance line and, you know, Iwata actually bought Sparmax, owns them, as well as H&S, so I can't imagine them wanting that much overlap in their product lines. So which one of these airbrushes would I buy? I'd buy them all. Clearly I have. But I understand not everybody's going to buy them all. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to your use case. And we discussed the pros and cons of that. So it depends on what your use case is. All of these airbrushes that I showed here today are brushes that come in at a good price point and they're going to last you for years, if not decades. You know, these are airbrushes you can live with for a very, very long time. They're very, very high quality. Unlike the $30 airbrush reviews, which are brushes we just talked about recently, these are considerably good airbrushes. As you move into more expensive airbrushes, your return for what you get is not going to be much better. So, you know, it's not like it's going to be very, very small increments. Yes, there's a difference between a micron and anything sitting on the table here, but it's also five times the money of anything sitting on the table here. Anyway, guys, that's a wrap for today. Oh, and if you wanted me to, if you think I need to get the super details set up and do a full length review on the Patriot, leave me some comments. I get a few comments for it. I'll do it. If not, if nobody seems interested in the next couple weeks, then I'm probably going to forget all about it because I don't really use my Patriot except for large coverage like that. Anyway, 
I'm Bill Kennedy with the Airspace. Y'all have a great day.